I'd invite you to turn in your Bibles tonight to Psalm 19. Psalm chapter 19, a couple of verses I wanted to look at as we near the end of our, our school year. I know many of you have family and friends who have uh, graduated. A uh, little bit different ceremonies this year because of the pandemic, but nonetheless, they have put in the necessary work and graduated. And oftentimes at graduations, when we talk to graduates, we'll talk to them about wisdom. And so tonight I want to just give you a quick thought on a word to the wise, a word to the wise. That's a familiar proverb to us. Actually, the full proverb says, a word to the wise is sufficient. And the meaning behind that proverb is, oftentimes with a wise person, we can just give them a word or a couple of words and they will get the meaning. Uh, one of the examples I thought of was uh, maybe as a parent and we're talking to our children, sometimes we might say, I wouldn't do that if I were you. And if they're wise, they will stop whatever they're doing without us going into a long explanation of why that might be dangerous. But scripture is filled with proverbs and with, and with wisdom for us as believers. And so tonight I want us to look at Psalm 19 and we're going to be looking at verses 7 to 11. Psalm 19, verses 7 to 11. Uh, the psalmist David writes this psalm, and we're, we're probably more familiar with the first part of this psalm. Verse 1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. And it goes on in familiar verses. And at the beginning of the psalm, we see that God reveals himself in creation. But if we skip down to verse 7, we, we see the fact that God reveals himself also in his word. And that is what I would like for us to look at tonight. So let's, let's read verse 7 down through verse 11. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Uh, many of you maybe have heard the, these verses put to song. Start out with verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect. And uh, for your sake, I want to spare you hearing me sing that song tonight. But that song oftentimes enables us to memorize these verses. What I want us to look at from these verses tonight is three things about God's Word. I want us to look at the fact that there is wisdom in God's Word, there is worth or value in God's Word, and there are warnings for us in God's Word. Word. Let's look back up at verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. The idea of law there is the teaching or the direction or the instruction in God's Word is perfect. It's complete. Uh, nothing needs to be added to it. In fact, in Scripture, it gives us several warnings about adding to God's Word. In Deuteronomy 4, verse 2, it says, Ye shall not add unto the Word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it. In Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6, it repeats this idea. It says, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. And then verse 6 says, add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So God's word is complete. It's, there's nothing that needs to be added to him. And then it goes on to say, it converts the soul. The, added, the, uh, the idea there of convert is the fact that God's word revives or it restores. And no other book can do that. There's other good information books out there, but no other book can revive and restore my heart like God's word can. So he says the law of God is perfect. It converts the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. When we think of testimony, oftentimes we think about in a court case, someone will give their testimony. 
And sometimes a, a person's testimony changes during the course of the interrogation. But God's word is not that way. It says that the testimony of the Lord is sure. It's steadfast. It's firm. It's fixed. Look at verse 8. The statutes of the Lord are right. So God's orders, God's charges, God's precepts, they are right, rejoicing the heart. The idea there is, as God reveals himself to me in Scripture, and I learn more about God, and I learn more about God's ways, that encourages me. It brightens my day. It cheers me up, despite difficult surroundings. When we know who God is, and when we know that he does not change, that causes our hearts to rejoice. And then he goes on to say, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The idea there, obviously, of something that is pure is it is clean. It has no impurities. And so God's word then enlightens our eyes. It gives us understanding. The idea of when we go into a dark room and then a light is turned on and we, we see, we understand. Sometimes as teachers, we use the idea of with a student, when we're, we're teaching a thought and we say that the, the light bulb went on, they understand their eyes have been enlightened. Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Again, the fear of the Lord, God's word, is clean. And because it's clean, it won't fade, it, it won't corrupt, it won't change. And then it says it endures forever. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But look at the end of verse 9 where it says, The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. It's very important for us to understand and be thankful for the fact that we have a righteous judge. You know, a judge could be right 99% of the time in all of his court cases. And that would be an outstanding percentage. But what if that 1% time that the judge was not right was when I was on trial or you were on trial? Him being right 99% of the time wouldn't matter to us in that point. But you and I serve a God who is a righteous judge. He is always going to do what's right. Abraham understood that. Back in Genesis chapter 18, when uh, he was talking with God about God not destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham, you know the story, he goes and he says to the Lord, if I can find 50 righteous men, would you spare the city? And in verse 25 of chapter 18 of Genesis, he says, that be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked. And that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. And then he says, shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You and I can rest in the fact that our God, the Lord, will always do what is right. And so we see here in this passage the wisdom in God's word. Now, how does that benefit us? A couple of the benefits, number one, is when we see that the authority of God's word, it is the final authority. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13 says this, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard of us, you received it as the word of men, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, we, you've heard this verse before as well. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures is of private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We can take confidence in the wisdom of God's word because it is the final authority. Another reason why I can take confidence in the wisdom found in God's word is because the accuracy that is found in scripture. Psalm 119 verse 128 says, Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. God's word doesn't speak to every individual situation that I will encounter in my life, 
But every time God's Word speaks on a subject, it is entirely accurate. And I can take principles from God's Word and apply them to every situation. So the wisdom of God's Word, it's, the, it's His final authority, and it is also completely accurate. Matthew 5, 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no, in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Everything that God's Word says did happen and will happen is 100% accurate. Another benefit to God's Word is the fact of, I phrase it, the eternality of God's Word. It's eternal. It's never changing. Psalm 119.89 says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119160, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. 1 Peter 1, 24 and 25, verse 24 talks about uh, the, our flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass, the grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the words by which the gospel is preached unto you. And so when I think about wisdom and the wisdom that I can obtain from God's word, I'm thankful that it's the final authority. It will never change. It's 100% accurate and it's eternal. We think about the pandemic that we're in today and all the research that's being done. And you go back a couple of months to early March when it really started becoming uh, on the news. And you think back just in the two months about a lot of the ways that conventional wisdom has changed regarding different aspects of COVID-19. I'm thankful that God's word does not change. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever, just like Jesus Christ is. So there is wisdom in God's word for you and I today. The second thing I see from this passage is that there's worth or there is value for us when we obey God's word. Look again at verse 10. It says, More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Well, how is God's word valuable to you and I? Well, first of all, I think we, we realize the fact that I can be prosperous, you can be prosperous when we obey God's word. We can be successful. Now, I'm not talking about success the way that the world would define success, but according to God's standard of success, you and I can be successful when we read and obey God's word. Joshua 1 verse 8, another familiar verse. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Scripture links success back to reading and meditating and obeying God's word. Psalm chapter 1, another familiar uh, passage, uh, verse 1 gives us some uh, warnings about those that, that we uh, interact and follow. And then we get down to verse 2 and it says, but his delight, referring to the blessed man, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Then it goes on to say, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Again, this idea of prospering being linked back to my delight and your delight and our obedience being to God's Word. So the worth, the value I can find in God's Word is by obeying it. Another benefit to God's Word is the fact that it keeps us from stumbling. Psalm 119, so we're in Psalm 19, but Psalm 119, verses 9 to 11, many of you have memorized these verses, says this, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Another value of God's word is that it warns me about things that would be detrimental to me. I picture sometimes God's commandments as being guardrails. You know, a lot of times we don't really pay attention to guardrails, but 
a um, couple years back, uh, on the way home from our church or to, to or from, we crossed a little bridge. And one Sunday evening after the service, we were leaving and we got down to the intersection about to go down the hill and cross the little bridge. And we could see that traffic was backed up. And so we took a detour and we got on the interstate and we went home. Uh, the next morning I was headed into the church and as I got to that uh, section, it was blocked off. And so I did a detour, but I could see from the interstate over to this access road. And I could see that the guardrails over the bridge were completely gone. And I looked at the news and I, I read the sad story that, that earlier that Sunday evening, the night before, that, that a dump truck had gone over that bridge into the water underneath. You know, the next day or two as I drove by on the interstate, I always looked over and noticed that the guardrails were missing. Sometimes we don't really pay attention to guardrails until they are gone, right? but they're necessary. We want them there. And so God's word has value for you and I because God's word gives us guardrails. It keeps us from sinning. It keeps us from consequences that would harm us. Psalm 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Again, the idea of God's word keeping me from stumbling, it gives me safety. I think of two examples that stick out uh, to me regarding this darkness and light. Several years back, we would take our youth group uh, caving or spelunking to a place. And so we would go way back in this cave and you were crawling around rocks and, and we would get to this point and the guide would say, all right, for just a couple of seconds, I want everybody to turn your lights off. And so we were wearing helmets that had a light on them. So we would reach up and turn it off and he would say, if you have a watch, cover your watch face with your hand. And just how pitch black it was. Nobody was going to move in the darkness. And then he would say, after what seemed like a minute or so, turn your lights back on. And then we could see and we were free to move about. But the light would keep us from stumbling. One night in our home, we were playing hide and seek with the kids and I went upstairs to an attic that we had, and I thought this would be a really good place to hide. But I didn't want to just open the door and hide. So I opened the door, and I, I used some of the beams, the support rafters up in the attic, and I climbed all the way up to where I was standing on top of what was the, the door seal at the top. And so my, one of the kids would come up and they would open the door and they would look in and of course they wouldn't see me and they closed the door and I would kind of laugh a little bit and I was thinking to myself, they're never going to find me up here. I could hear them talking, where's dad, where's dad? But after a few minutes, I realized it's really dark up here and I cannot see a thing. There is no way that I'm going to be able to get down. And so I turned from I don't want them to find me turned into, I hope one of them comes and finds me in a little bit so that I can get down from here. The idea was I needed light. I needed safety. I needed to see the, where I was going to step. And so God's word is that way. God's word gives us wisdom. God's word gives us, uh, shows us how we can get worth or value. Again, I'm not talking about the world's definition but it tells me how I can be prosperous. It can keep me from stumbling. You know, we oftentimes uh, need, need God's word and we need that wisdom and we need to know what do I need to do to be successful. And we didn't need to know what do I not need to do to avoid negative consequences. And so I see there's wisdom in God's word. There's worth or there's value in God's word. Look at verse 11. It says, Moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Here again, we see the fact that God tells us in his word that he gives us warnings. We have warnings all around us. If you think back over your day today, you've probably encountered some type of warning. It might be 
you stop to get coffee this morning and there's a, a warning on the side of the cup that tells you it's hot. Uh, it was maybe driving today. You might have seen a, a digital traffic sign warning traffic ahead or object in the road, slow down. Our appliances have warnings. Maybe in your own yard or in a, a neighbor's yard, you see on a fence, beware of the dog and there's a warning. You know, throughout scripture, God gives us warnings. Several years back, we were taking our youth group uh, into Atlanta to watch the Braves game. And we were going down Interstate 20, obviously a very busy, busy road. And all of a sudden we got a flat tire. And so we, I pulled the bus off on the side of the road and we had another vehicle that was coming. And so uh, we put as many of the teens as we could in the van and they went on to the game. And my friend and I that was, were with me you know, pulled off. We called a mobile service to come and help. And so I got out the orange safety triangle reflectors and I walked behind the bus and I, I put them out the distance you're supposed to. And a couple minutes later, the, the mobile truck shows up and the gentleman gets out and he has all of his equipment. He's going to be fixing, repairing the tire. And, you know, oftentimes you'll see that on the side of the road. It's, it's not really a safe place. I'd pulled as far over as I could. So my friend and I got behind our bus and we went back 50 to 100 yards or so, and we were motioning for the oncoming traffic to move to the side, uh, just for extra safety for this gentleman. And I remember there was a, a black car that was coming towards us, and, and as it got closer, I could see that the driver wasn't really paying attention. He was looking down at his phone. And so we, as he got closer, he's still looking at his phone, but he looked up in time uh, to not hit us or the bus, but he did not look up in time uh, to avoid running over the triangle safety reflector. And I was thinking, warnings only do us good if we see them and we heed them. Now, those warnings helped him a little bit. Uh, he obviously did not hit the bus or hit us but he, he, he only saw the warning at the last possible second. You know, and oftentimes in life, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll, we'll read a warning in God's word and we'll think, well, that doesn't apply to us. We'll think, well, I can continue doing this for a little bit longer without having a bad consequence. And that's not God's desire. God's desire is he wants us to stay as far away. Think back to the guardrails. He wants us to stay away as far away from sin and those negative consequences as possible. So we see here that there is wisdom to be found in God's word. We see that there is worth that is found in God's word. And then we see that there are warnings to be found, to be heeded in God's word. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them, there is great reward. This passage shows us that in God's word, I can find wisdom. In God's word, there is value, there is worth. What do I need to do to be prosperous and successful? What do I need to avoid for negative consequences? And then there's also many warnings. So God's word gives me wisdom and worth and warnings. A word to the wise, to each of us, we would do well to read it and to obey it. Thank you for joining with us tonight. I hope God blesses the rest of your week.